Hey, how's it going, guys? Hope you can hear me. And, you know, I apologize if this is a uh, really ready view. But again, I don't make my videos to actually watch, but just to listen to. Uh, I have to keep it kind of in the shade so you're kind of behind me a little bit. I'm blocking the sun so my phone doesn't get overheated. So with that being said, as we see everything unfolding before our very eyes, biblical prophecy is, is literally taking place. This is actually the fourth time I've tried to make this video. And we do know that many within the body of Christ are under a lot of pressure because we are in fact living in the final hours and that's to be expected. You know, when we became followers of Jesus Christ, we were never promised comfort. We were never promised that life, as far as from the worldly perspective, would be an easy task or even really that good because scripture tells us that the world will hate you because they hated Jesus Christ, our Savior. And because he indwells us when you're a Christ follower, the world will hate us. If the world embraces you as its own, if the world loves you, well, then that's a, it's actually a red flag, believe it or not. Now, because of this, because we're a Christ follower, we have a hope that the world doesn't have. So we can have, in, even in the midst of trials or of a storm, we can have peace and joy and patience and gentleness, and we can show kindness and love. Even though the whirlwinds of life are going on around us, we can live with that certainty because our hope is not of this world. It's in heaven with our Savior, and because we are waiting for Him, we are waiting for our blessed hope, everything of this world has no value to us anyway. If you're holding on to this world for whatever reason, I want to encourage you to set aside this world and worldly things and to focus on Jesus Christ. Now, okay, so let's get into why I'm making this video. And again, <laughs> we'll see how long it lasts because when it gets too hot, my phone shuts off. Uh, we see the day and hour approaching because of the biblical timeline. We all know it's an 80 year maximum timeline and if you subtract from, from 1948 and if you subtract the seven years of tribulation everything falls to right around where we are right now. So 1948 through 1950 that's kind of when the entirety of the nation of Israel is being established. So we see that we are at the very end of that timeline. I've obviously proposed October 8th and 9th of some events taking place. I took it from the perspective of the establishment of the Knesset, the second Knesset. The first Knesset was just kind of getting things originally set up. The second Knesset was they were really conducting business. And in that second Knesset, on October 8th of 1951, they made a pact, they made a deal, a covenant with their enemies enemies that they're fighting with right now. 
So like I mentioned in a video or two ago, that when Joshua was going to the promised land and laying claim to the promised land, he was instructed to destroy, to eradicate, to conquer, to kill every living thing that is occupying those regions. And wouldn't you know it, the one place where Joshua disobeyed the Father and did not eradicate everything, and that even goes as far as tearing down their idols, destroying all of their possessions, I mean, scorched earth, making sure those civilizations no longer existed, nor the memory of them was there. The one place where Joshua did not fulfill that was no kidding in Gaza. Wasn't well, that interesting? So in 1951, they made a deal that same group of people, or technically their descendants, and fell apart after about a year on December 20th of 1952. And if you had fast forward in time to the day on December 20th of 2020, the first abomination was given in Israel. So I laid out a potential timeline judging and viewing the signs in which we have the celestial signs happening, the time of the feasts in which in our vindication is the Lord is going to fulfill the feasts as he did the first time he came. So it stands for reason he will do the same. However, in itself the rapture could be a a special day all in itself that has nothing to do with the actual feasts, but with that being said, there is indication that it is tied to feast day. So we want to just put that out there. You know, day now no man knows, the last trump, you know, this is pointing to a feast day, to Rosh Hashanah, to the Feast of Trumpets. However, there are other indications that it could be the, the following feast days. And so, you need to look into that yourself. Now what I ended up doing is uh, yesterday was the, I don't think I'm gonna go this way. Yesterday was the one year anniversary of uh, the emergency alert. And also, apparently, Make sure we're still recording. Sorry. I have you kind of in the shade behind me and blocking the sun. Um, yesterday, the, uh, the moon was spotted. So technically that's when the official Rosh Hashanah began. Not on the date of October 2nd when they proposed it. So there's a lot of things happening, my friends. What I'm trying to make is be prepared at all times. Be ready always. Because the Lord will come like a thief, especially to those who are not watching and waiting. Now, when we're watching and waiting on a daily basis, it's not as critical to us. What it is are those who are on the fence, those who are lukewarm, or those who do not know the Lord, is very critical because these final fleeting moments, it's imperative that they fully surrender this world and fully embrace Jesus Christ. Because we do know that destruction comes at the rapture, right at the rapture, destruction comes. In Revelation 14, it outlines what is taking place in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 17. It's the rapture. It outlines the rapture. 
And then the following destruction that comes and takes place by fire for the angel in charge of the fire after Jesus Christ reaps his people, his body, his church, his temple off the earth, his bride, the fire comes. And that angel who's in charge of the fire calls out to the next angel coming out of the throne to put in your sickle and reap the clusters of the earth are ripe and they were thrown into the great wine press of the wrath of God which is in fact the tribulation so we see these things happening we do know that the cry of command has stated in 1 Thessalonians the voice of the archangel what he's saying is put in your sickle and reap exactly what it is sorry guys it's actually warm today <clears throat> so this timeline this biblical timeline you know we either observe it and try to piece it together so we can warn others or we can just ignore it now on this channel, yeah, you know, I've really I've stressed these timelines extensively. Now we always want to have the Lord come at the earliest possible moment, but in His great love and mercy, He's waiting to the last possible moment. That's why over the past seven years we've been really sounding the alarm because Jesus Christ is giving the entirety of the world every opportunity to repent and to follow him. However, many won't. We know that, and it's sad and it's heartbreaking. And this is even people within our own family, our loved ones. And, you know, it, it's a bummer. And so that's why we warn, that's why we take the time to do these things. And, um, with that being said, you know, when the world embraces you, that's a red flag. If the world despises you, now, mind you, this is even those that call themselves in the body of Christ because they don't want to hear a message like this. It's sad that there's a portion of those who say they follow Jesus, they don't trust and believe in him. I don't understand how that works out or how that works with them, but that is the case. So we see the handwriting on the wall, and so we warn. Now, oh, sorry guys, it's actually really steep. That being said, I've actually posted a few times on this channel angelic encounters that I had for the Lord, Lord place. No kidding. Angelic interaction. Now this is years ago, but you know, it says help those around you. And I'm going to paraphrase it. Because you may be entertaining angels. Now, on the flip side, when you're doing things for yourself, you're doing this, and you're doing things, or partnering with things that this world loves and embraces and supports, are you entertaining demons? You know, just let that sink in. I know that many believe they can say a couple words 20, 30, 40 years ago and completely turn their back on the Lord and don't live for Him don't talk about Him don't do anything in regards to His body to relationship with Him 
And many think everything is just all Jim Dandy, and that's not the case. That's not even true. That's not even biblical. And so, you know, we are doing things selfishly, or we're doing things that are literally contrary to biblical doctrine, which many twist for their own evil desires and needs. You know, we're entertaining demons. We're allowing the demonic to orchestrate many things in our life because, again, we allow it. So I want you to do some study in that and really seek the Lord in regards to what I am saying. And just know that to the degree that you place your life in the narrow path of Jesus Christ is a degree that the enemy can't mess with you. But if your whole day is dedicated to this world and worldly things, you're allowing, you're allowing those things to take place in your life that are not of heavenly or godly actions or things. Does that make any sense? It may not make sense to some. These last days, we are at the doorstep of an event that the body of Christ calls the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture. We see that the aurora borealis is happening again because of a uh, X9 uh, coronal mass ejection or, or even an EMP uh, but it's a coronal mass ejection that's coming towards Earth and so we're going to be seeing the aurora again and then also we see the planetary alignment we see the distress of nations we see World War III on the horizon this is talked about daily we see the mass alien deception coming we see the handwriting on the wall. We see them posturing for the next phase, the domination phase for the mark of the beast, for the fear phase, the bribery phase, and the intimidation phase already went out. Once the body Christ is removed, the full domination phase will, be, will commence. It'll be implemented. Satan is finally here, stuck here on earth after we're removed. He's cast down. And his guy, his boy, after all the chaos of the rapture happens, he's going to try to get everything settled out. And people are going to follow him like he's God. Because this is how it's orchestrated. This is how it's set up. And so they can't do the domination phase right now. Because even the blind sleeping church would see that. They would recognize that. If they start executing people because you refuse to accept something into your body that alters the temple because we are the temple because people are now wake up once a rapture happens people will finally finally open their eyes even the sleeping slumbering lukewarm church they'll, they'll their eyes will be open and they'll think man we maybe we shouldn't have been fighting against this we should have been embracing it and ready for Jesus Christ appearing. But they can't start executing people right now in regards to the mark because the sleeping church will see it. Does that make any sense? So right now we are preparing. It could be moments, days away. Prepare for the sound of the trumpet. Set aside your religious beliefs and practices and fully embrace Jesus Christ. Hurry before it's too late. Jesus is at the door. His hand is extended to you. Grab his hand. Fully repent and give your life to him completely. Right now, hurry. Time, we are out of time. 
I could uh, have gone into deeper details about things, but there's no point. Everybody has exhausted every clue and indication of the Lord's appearing millions of times at this point. Just look on you, just look on this platform. There is nothing else that needs to be said. At this point, we're just a, a, a clanging cymbal, a banging drum now. If you still believe that we must be cleansed in the tribulation, well, my friends, if, if that's what you want to do, I can't stop you, but I challenge you and encourage you to rethink that doctrine and to really study scripture. I still hear people quoting Darby. Oh, Darby. Is <laughs> Guys, that's, that's old news. That's old news. It's biblically proven of the pre-tribulation rapture. We are not in the tribulation right yet. We are in the birth pains. Absolutely. Absolutely in the birth pains. When the tribulation takes place, trust me, you will know because the body of Christ is gone. <laughs>